Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we're about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, we are just going to look briefly at Usain Bolt, the SSL, and the culture of political silence, the, the culture of corruption um, in Jamaica. Now, it is interesting that Jamaicans tend to be very silent when it comes on to corruption. Um, it seems to me that we are so much accustomed to having it there. We have been desensitized. Everything, corruption has been made as a normal activity. And people just think that that is what we have. We have a culture of corruption. And that is something that we have endeared ourselves to and that we have not really sought to challenge uh, over the years that, you know, Jamaica has been an independent station um, as we know it to have been. I'm not sure that we have ever been independent. I think that that was also a winter dressing, something that was just designed to make us feel that we own Jamaica when the majority of Jamaicans find themselves in a country where foreigners and the economic ruling class and the economic elites are the ones who control the entire or most of the resources that we have there and they decide how to use when to use and to whom to give to share these resources with and we have this thing where you know um the ssl we had that corruption charges allegations against a number of people including the prime minister who actually had funds who had money at the ssl um enterprise and decided that he would withdraw his investments from that institution sometimes, you know, years before the institution actually fell, before everything, you know, the, the corruption charges were made against the company and we saw the collapse of that financial institution. That was very interesting. And now we're hearing the Prime Minister from the Integrity Commission of talking about the acquisition of illicit gains, right? Financial, um, illicit financial gains of the, by the prime minister and the fact that he has 28 bank accounts. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine last week and she said, you know, that her father had a number of bank accounts and perhaps 20. And so it's nothing for Andrew Holness to have 28 bank accounts. And, you know, and I can understand from a civilian perspective, but we have to look at the big picture and we've got to look at the fact that Andrew Holness is the prime minister of Jamaica and he is a public servant and we should hold him to the highest standard. Now, there are times even when as a private citizen, you might get with, away with corruption charges. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, and sometimes there are things that you might be allowed to do as a private citizen that you perhaps should not be allowed to do as a public servant, as a public citizen. For example, a teacher is a human being, right? And so often, I don't know if I would find myself at the same club with a student of mine and I'm, you know, actually dancing and drinking and behaving in an unseemly manner in front of my students. I am also, you know, a, a civilian just like the student. But I think that in trying to promote and to, vent, to defend certain values, certain wholesome values, I think that I should not find myself. I mean, if I find myself in a way that was not deliberate, a deliberate attempt that one of my students entered a club. I don't go to club, by the way, but I don't know if I would want to sit there. I would be uncomfortable to be in the same bar or in the same club, you know, uh, that my student frequents or students frequent. You know, I don't think I would become that. That's me because I think that my students hold me to a certain standard. And for them to be seeing me behaving in sometimes an, un, un, an un, uncultured manner, I don't think that that is something that I would like to display to my students. That's personally, that's how I see it. I mean, I don't think I would view my teacher in a positive light if I should see him or her in a club dancing and drinking and then, you know, uh, behaving in a in an uncivilized manner, I don't think that I would, you know. So I don't think when we look at the prime minister, we should not be suggesting that because others are doing it and they might have the time to do it in terms of managing 20 bank accounts that our prime minister will have that time to do so. 
Secondly, he is the steward of a lot of money. He has access to state fund. I think that the Jamaican people should be aware of how and what, right, in terms of his usage of the state funds that he has access to. Now, no one is suggesting that the prime minister is using state funds illicitly. What we're suggesting here is that we should have an understanding. There should be transparency uh, as far as the usage, his using these state funds. And if questions are asked, I think that the prime minister should stand up to scrutiny. But what we're seeing now is that the prime minister is behaving like a king. Now, I'm not suggesting here that the integrity um, commission is also not playing politics because that's what they're doing. They're playing politics. I've always told you that this is a smoke screen where in which the PNP, who have been out of power for so many years, are desirous of having a piece of the pie, right? They have long not had the serving of the pie and they wish to also begin to, you know, to have that portion, the, their portion of the pie. It's not about they're trying to rid corruption out of Jamaica, trying to eradicate corruption because they themselves are corrupt. And I'm sure that they have a lot of skeletons in the, in the closet that the other party knows about, that the incumbent government, the JLP government knows about because they work together and they protect each other. Yes, they might have a fall guy here or there, but it does not mean, therefore, that that is going to change the system, it's going to transform the system, right? But we see here, this. there's an article that came in the papers this morning that was published in the Jamaica Gleaner talking about Hussein Bolt and the fact that he is expressing, he's articulating that he is disappointed and distressed about the fact that he has not received his... Um, money in terms of he has not that money the money that he lost in ssl or that he has been alleged to have lost because we don't know what's what in jamaica i have just everything is alleged for me because we don't know the truth and we will and it seems to me that jamaica is a state in which we will never know what is fully the truth so we always have to say something is alleged right it's not that it is def is conclusive because we're not getting anything conclusive, anything unequivocal coming out of that country. And because we do not have also investigation in terms of investigative journalism, then we will not know. I don't think our journalists have access, being paid high sums of money not to share information with you. So we are actually living in a very dark society, a society that describes itself as democracy, but it is not a democracy. Right, Jamaica is far from a democracy and has been operating like that for so many years. But this is what the Gleaner is saying. Eight-time Olympic champion Usain Bolt is shocked and disappointed over the lack of transparency surrounding the investigation into billions of dollars defrauded from his and more than 30 other clients' accounts at Stocks and Securities Limited SSL more than a year ago. So this has been an ongoing matter. The world record holder in the 100 and 200 meter sprints is also frustrated that despite the announcement of a criminal investigation involving the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, in the United States and other international partners, there has been no update about his stolen 12.7 million U.S. dollars, right? So 12.7 million U.S. dollars that this gentleman had invested in this fund. And over a year has passed, but that is how Jamaica does things. It begins now to make the process lengthy, right? And you are questioning and every day you're gonna have some pronouncements here or there, and they think that you're getting closer to, and they're going to, you know, um, get some form of justice. They're gonna dispense some form of justice. But every time they do that, you realize that no justice at all. Justice is not forthcoming. And we're talking here about a prominent Jamaican personality, a prominent Jamaican citizen. We're not talking about here just, you know, a working class. Of course, he came from the bowels of the working class, but you're talking about somebody who has become prominent over the years, not only in Jamaica, but a global icon. 
partner and the government, he doesn't seem to be able to get some form of justice. And this man has enough money, I'm sure, to employ the best lawyer to defend his case. Now, what if this was an ordinary person like myself and, and, and an ordinary citizen of Jamaica? And when I say ordinary here, don't think I would think that the same board is superior to the Jamaican citizen. You must understand that there are levels of identities, right? They're on the whole hierarchical structure of power. There is, and these people, because he is connected to some of the elites by virtue of his, you know, his 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 uh, his money, his financial status, then he's going to have some access to lawyers, to politicians, right? That you and I don't have access to. And with all of the access that he has to these people, he does not seem to be near getting his um his funds, getting back his money. Now, Linton Gordon, Bode's law armed attorney, told the Gleaner yesterday that the retired track legend is yearning to know who is responsible for his missing funds at the Scandal's card investment firm. Dr. Nigel Clark announced that investigators were coming from Canada, England, from Timbuktu, and from the United States. So he's, I'm sure, you know, <laughs> being sarcastic here. We haven't had one iota of information regarding the outcome of those investigations. So we don't know who took the money, who we can turn to because everything is now undercover, Gordon said. Now, this is what Usain Bolt's attorney is saying, that they don't know. Everything is a cover-up. Everything is shrouded in secrecy. And even as a lawyer, and we hope that this is not just acting because they sometimes do act, right? Because even as a lawyer, he doesn't seem to have the wherewithal, the capacity to dig deep because everything is covered up, right? Yet it's a democracy. It's a democracy. We're not even going to talk about the people who have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars from big banks like even the bank like Nova Scotia and also NCB who just had their savings and their hard-earned monies just dissolved. It just vanished, right? It just vanished into thin air. You know, you, people just came and took out your money without your even having given them access to it. And then, you know, somebody all the way in Saudi Arabia or all the way in wherever the country is, right? is extracting funds from your account. And these are banks that should have some amount of protection and should be able to protect the identities of their clients. But that is not happening in Jamaica. And this is not something that is a, you know, something that is not common. It is a common undertaking in Jamaica where people lose their savings, their investments, their deposits, their financial holdings in prominent banks in Jamaica, and nothing becomes of it, right? Nothing, and they've done all that they're asked to do by these financial institutions, and I would say 95% of the times, they do not have their monies returned to them, right? This is something that is interesting. You know, this is something that is interesting. How is it that we're going to, you know, survive as a society when we have that high level of corruption? And when you see these patterns, make no bones about it, we understand that these activities are coming from the upper echelon of society, the people who are leading, the persons who are running the show. It's not coming from the midman, the middleman, I should say. And oftentimes when we think about crime, we think about the man in the ghetto. We don't think about our prime ministers. We don't think about our political leaders. We don't think about our financial leaders. We think that they're, they're securing us, protecting us. And a lot of time, a lot of times I should say, they are in cahoots with these very, very nefarious activities, very nefarious criminal activities. 
that if a light should shine on them, you would be surprised. You would be surprised to see people dressed in ties and jackets and they look very refined, are engaged in some of the most criminal activities in Jamaica. I mean, not only in Jamaica, but in the world at large. I'm just, you know, addressing what is happening there. Now, Clark, who will leave his post as Minister of Finance and the Public Service later this month for a senior position at the International Monetary Fund, could not be reached for comment on the matter as caused his phone went unanswered. And this is what they do. They're not going to answer you. And I don't think Nigel Clark, now that he's heading to the International Monetary Fund, is going to answer anything regarding SSL. He's going to be speaking in very cryptic language that people won't be able to understand. Sounds like he's very intelligent. And at the end of the day, this is going to be another 90 wonder and life goes on because that is how the system is designed to run. Right? Yet still, we are doing well economically and our macroeconomic fundamentals are great. And the prime minister has his 28 bank accounts and his children are also involved and prosperity has not eluded the prime minister and his family. But prosperity has eluded, is eluding the ordinary Jamaican. And notice when I say ordinary Jamaican, I'm saying those who do not have access to wealth, right? Because a lot of Jamaicans don't and will never have. And that is why I call those the ordinary average Jamaican. We are all equal in the sight of the Lord. We should be equal. Notice I use the conditional word, should be equal under the law, but we are not equal under the law. We should, right? But it's not happening. Right? We should have been independent. We should have been able to exercise our sovereignty, but we can't because we are beholden to these financial and global elites who have held the citizens in Jamaica at ransom. And so this is a very prominent global icon and he's distressed and he has expressed that he's disappointed in the system. So what should the ordinary average Jamaican say? If Usain Bolt is disappointed, is yes, a lot of money. He would say it's a lot of money, so he has to be disappointed and also distressed. But at least he has some money and he still has opportunities. What about the person who that was all that they had? Right? And this is what this was what happened during the FinSAC, where people went from having something, weren't rich, but were middle class. And they went from having some amount of security, financial security, to nothing. Right? in which overnight they became impoverished, homeless, destitute, and some eventually committed suicide in a nation that brags itself as let's get together and feel all right, that everything is all right. You know, what, what's the slogan again? Um, no problem man. Yeah, Jamaica, no problem man when there are plenty of problems. But guess what? I think we should say that, yes, there are plenty of problems, but we just throw them under the rug. And then we dance and we sing and we gyrate our bodies, right? Because that is how we deal with our problems. We do not confront our problems. We do not come up with solutions for our problems. We prefer to just throw them under the rug as we're seeing now with the SSLs, and just another one that will just be thrown under the rug. People have already expressed their angst, their anger, their frustrations, their, dis their distress, but they're not consistent to continue putting pressure on the government. Right? I am not suggesting here, ladies and gentlemen, that you should go and take Andrew Holness out of the Jamaica House, because as I suggested to you, that is not going to change the system. Because Andrew Holness belongs, and he knows that, to a corrupt system. It is what it is. Right? It's just like my going into, you know, uh, one of the crypts, the crypts, right? And thinking that I'm going there just to observe and to change them. 
right? You think I'm going to go into a gang to change a, a gang, right? And, you know, I just, you know, because some people are naive like that, right? They're entering a gang because they want to see what happens there. And, you know, in case I can change their minds and I can transform them. So you'd say that I'm going to be a part of the gang. Now, I'm not suggesting that you can go and speak to gang members and convince them to, using compelling arguments, to get themselves out of those criminal enterprises and entities. However, if you think you're going to go there and become a member to change that institution or that enterprise, right? that is not possible. You're being delusional. And in Jamaica at this moment, the politics is so corrupt that I don't think decent politicians, which there might be a few, are going to be able to change a system that operates there, right? So Dr. Clark is suggesting, oh, well, he hasn't responded to his call, you know, um, but in January 2023, Clark told the nation that investigators led by the Financial Investigations Division, so another, the Financial Investigation Divisions, the Financial Investigations Division, are these people, you know, are these people a part of the problem? We should be asking the question, the Integrity Commission, the Financial Investigations Division, all of these people, are they a part of the problem? And if they are indeed a part of the problem, do you think that they are going to solve the problem? And I'm sure that you would say, or you would give me a resounding no. Because if they're benefiting from the problem, they're not going to solve the problem. And this is what this is the issue we face now. This is the issue that confronts Jamaicans or the institutions that have been set up to be watchdogs and to be guardrails to combat criminal corruption and criminal activities acts of corruption are they linked to the corrupt activities right are they a part of it are they a part of that club and if we look at the history it's I'm sure it is really I don't think it's going to be unjustified, all right? I don't think it's going to be logical, irrational to say that it seems that they have some amount of stain, some amount of blood on their hands, right? I don't think that it, it, it is going to be, you know, something that cannot be said. I think that it's reasonable to say that it seems that they are a part of the problem. We've got to wake up, Jamaicans, and we've got to see that our system is so much corrupt that it seems like it's just about to collapse right before our eyes. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like and share and you subscribe. Remember now that you should like the videos. That's the, way, the only way that the videos are going to be shared on this platform. Thank you so much and see you in another video.